Live from the Quadigian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. In my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been serving the country, and we like all their finance and giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting mission building through its many sponsorships and programs including Financial Literacy Quiz, Pass the Torch Calypso Program, Junior Cooperatives in Secondary Schools, CPEA, and the Time CC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union. It's where you belong. And good evening. This is the GPN Television News for today, the 28th day of May 2020. I'm Odette Campbell. Coming up in the news this evening, the owner and workers at the Douglaston Estate devastated following Monday's fire. Explosion at a gas station on Union Island sends shockwaves through the archipelago. Grenada's opposition leader says politics matter not with his senatorial appointments. The education minister's CSCXE exam dates not her choosing. And coming up in sports this evening, the CWI get assurances over player safety for proposed July test tour. And when we look around the globe, St. Lucia considers phased reopening of grade 6 and form 5 classes. We'll bring in the details right after this message. And welcome back. Our first story this evening, not too much of a pleasant note. The owner and 15 workers who for most of their lives worked on the property of the Douglaston estate are still trying to come to grips with Monday's fire. GBN visited what is left of the historical site in St. John today and Christina John sent us this report. It was a sad tale to tell and an even more difficult story to listen to. Shout to you. It's a good, very good. I don't I don't can. From a million, I get the coffee, I get the boots and everything. Okay. 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 I really miss you. Hello. It's hurting you, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's not hurting you. Yeah, look at the daily bird. Look at the daily bird again. I can't look now again. Okay. Uh, it's about 75 years now, then it's it. Okay. Yes, yeah, 75 oh. years. That's a long time. No, not a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I've right. been born, born, I've been born now, for a long time. Oh, goodness. My dad, my dad, my dad, my dad, boots. Okay. Okay, so. Mr. Augustine Elias, also known as Manu, knows no other place of abode or employment. He's into his 70s and grew up on the Douglaston estate from the time he was a child, and that's the only place he worked. He was on duty when the alarm was sounded. For Mrs. Catherine Dupre Joseph, it's a similar story of having only this place to call home and work. She also grew up on the estate, following in the footsteps of her mother and grandmother. He, he has been a great loss. It's like some, you know, like when somebody has been crippled you with a hard blow. Because all my life, I have to say, all my life I work with these people, and for the 27 years I work here, I have experienced a lot of different people coming, experiencing, you know, different languages. And um, it was a breadwinner for me and others who work here. So I must say it is a great loss, seeing and again to see all the artifacts that was there, all the books, all the records that have been deteriorated and they have been burned. 
it's really a great loss. The estate has been owned by the Branch family and is managed by John Branch. He's still trying to come to terms with the fact that millions of dollars worth of artifacts have come to naught. For him, it's not just about losing his business. It's more depressing to think about Grenada losing a significant and symbolic piece of history. It's a great loss to us. It's hurtful. Um, you know, regret, whatever, a lot of emotions come to mind. Also anger. As one of the two operators express that they, you know, they have made their contracts for about two years in advance with the cruise ship tours, mm -hmm. and they expect them to come back, and they would like to honor, because they appreciate what we've been doing in Douglaston, and it's a crucial part of the entire tour of the island. For more than 200 years, the estate has been the breadbasket for many households in the parish of St. John's and its environs. 15 people are now jobless. A police report says that a 60-year-old laborer has been charged in connection with the fire. Peter Adrian Henry, resident of Douglaston, was charged with two counts of arson by unlawfully setting fire to the Bukan and a dwelling house. Bail has been set in the sum of $100,000 with two sureties. The loss due to the fire is estimated at over $900,000. Christina John, GBN News. And we are so grateful to Christina for continuing to cover the story. She said it was a difficult tale to tell and a difficult one to listen to. I sat there and I remember as a child at the Anglican High School having gone on a field visit and it was really an enthralling one. So we really hope that the owners and the employees can find some kind of strength to deal with this situation at the moment. And while one of Grenada's most important agricultural establishments went up in smoke early Monday, less than 48 hours later, a major explosion was being reported on the Grenadine Island chain. The lone gas station on Union Island exploded, sending shockwaves through the neighboring islands, including Carrier Coup. Or Richard Joseph, who served as a producer at the Grenada Broadcasting Network for several years, is now based on Union, and she spoke with GBN today about last evening's shocking episode. And so I was leaving the office to go home, and when I arrived at my residence, um, the landlord told me that there was an explosion on Union Island at the gas station, and I was like, wow, an explosion. And immediately after I called one of my staff who lives in um, Clifton, uh, Miss Christy shot, and she said, yes, there was an explosion and the gas station is on fire. GBN's former reporter and producer, Orisha Joseph, as she spoke with our news desk today about the gas station explosion on Union Island last evening. The facility exploded sometime just after 6.30. The owner of the gas station, Freddie Nate, and two youngsters were injured in the blaze and airlifted to mainland St. Vincent. Joseph says the fire tender was called into action as Clifton was plunged into darkness. The island's National Emergency Agency coordinator, Abdan White, considers himself lucky since he was at the station a mere 15 minutes before the explosion occurred. I had just gone to the gas station. I just finished taking gas about 15 minutes earlier and I was on my way home when I when I stopped on the hill just to um, let out someone. When when we heard the explosion and we returned, um, at that time, you know, people were running all over the street trying to get away from, from the incident. Um, at that point, I saw I saw the, the young lady and she was visibly burnt all over her body and she was actually running in my direction um at that point a few people got her took put her in a vehicle and and, and they rushed her to the hospital the fire took place while the station was being refueled with supplies from mainland saint vincent this is a major blow for the island since the gas station is the only supplier of fuel for motorists and other persons the station is located in the village of Clifton, which is known as the main business center on the island. Orisha Joseph, who is an expert on sustainable resource management, says the main takeaway from last night's episode is the need for proper physical planning. 
I'm thinking going forward, even in the of planning and how we plan going forward in the you know, we take a lot of things for granted. We hop on a boat and we go to one island, sometimes not wearing like jackets. We have one gas station that is nestled so close to many other important businesses. You know, so even some of our planning long term and how we operate the Grenadines, knowing how vulnerable we are, if any natural disaster or any sort of um, incident were to happen, I think that whenever governments are planning safety and attention, needs to be taken into consideration in terms of how we plan our city plans or in going forward because you see how um how one now there's you know the gravitation was affected and then union is affected myra is affected and potentially those persons who used to come from um to have need to get gas and that's the island plus vehicles on the island you know plus all the boats because myro have a gas station they depend on their boats to get from one island to the next. The three injured persons are said to have sustained severe burns and are still awarded at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital in St. Vincent. Joseph Cador, GBN News. Governance, not politics. It's about the development of the country and not about political developments. That's the view of the leader of the opposition as he explains his pick of the three senators recently. Beverly Tellisworth has more. Leader of the opposition, Tobias Clement, says the political affiliations of his two Senate appointees is the least of his worries. Mr. Clement submitted the names of Kareen James and Tessa St. Cyr to represent the opposition in the upper house of representatives. Ms. James has been a member of the Senate since 2018 and is a member of the National Democratic Congress. Mr. Clement believes the business of the country must come before politics. Our the sole objective is to look at the governance of Grenada. And what is the role of a senator or a majesty's opposition in the parliament is to hold government responsible for all the enactment, the laws, and, and to point out to our Grenadian people any any shortcomings, and um, and this is what this is this is what we have to do in Parliament, and and this is what I will seek to engage with um, both Miss uh, Mrs. Sincere and Miss James that we take the debate in Parliament to a level so that the Grenadian people can start understanding how democracy works. Up to news time, letters of appointment from the Governor-General had not been issued. Mr. Clement has the right to appoint a third senator, whom he says he will name at a future date. I, I do have um, a, another person in mind. The, the um, person is not in Grenada as we speak. So when every we open up and he can be back or she can be back we will um we will make that that appointment when you look at the standing orders or uh, the constitution if you are appointed a senator and you are an mp and you miss um a certain amount of sittings then the position can be be, um, be voided i would prefer that the person be in grenada and, and to get those appointments also but um i would err on the side of caution so that when when they are present then such appointment can be made mr clement made the announcement of the senate appointees one month after being appointed as grenada's first official opposition leader in seven years for GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. And this is the news at 7. Still to come, the Education Minister agrees with Teachers Union on the date set for CXC, but she says it's totally out of her hands. And the COVID-19 Response Committee says only four active cases remain on the island. Do stay with us. Dear customer, please help us limit the potential impact of COVID-19. If you have cold, flu, or COVID-19 symptoms, please postpone your visit to Grenlec and ask someone you trust to do your business for you. 
We recommend using online banking to make payments available through Co-op Bank, Republic Bank, and FCIB. You can also use check drop boxes at each of our locations. For bill balances and other information, call 237. For additional support, email customer support at grenlec.com. If you choose to visit, you may have to wait outside because of the social distancing requirements. Our service may be slow, so please be patient with us. Have your account number handy to expedite service. Wishing you, your family, and employees health and wellness at this time. Our superheroes are all among us. They don't wear capes nor have superpowers. In fact, they appear to be quite ordinary. They are the ones who provide us with food. They are our farmers, our grocery store workers, our vendors. They are our fishermen. They are the ones who heal us, our doctors and medical practitioners. They are the ones who protect us, our police officers. They are all the other essential workers who make this period bearable. And how can we forget our teachers, dedicated to educating our children no matter the circumstance? To everyone who is doing their part to make sure the wheel keeps turning, Ariza says, thank you. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint shop. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. Eminent Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together. Moms are always special. We give them teddies, hugs, kisses, chocolates, perfumes, and jewelry. All the softer things in life. But for Father's Day... offers 15% discount of all machines store-wide. Come in and choose your favorite machine and instantly get 15% off. Walk in in style and walk out with a smile. This Father's Day, sale starts June 15th and ends June 20th. Europa. We service what we sell. Republic Bank assures all personal, small business, commercial, and corporate banking customers of our continued support during these uncertain times. We are pleased to advise that all our credit officers are available to assist you with navigating your finances during these challenging times. We encourage you to contact your relationship officer at the bank for discussion and advice on your particular circumstance for a solution that meets your your specific needs. Additionally, you may email us at customercare at republicgrenada.com or send us a message on Facebook or call 444-2265. We look forward to continue offering the best possible quality and personalized service to you. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caricou, and Petit Martinique in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Now more.
more than ever, Flo is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, and your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flow Study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlow app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. Republic Bank assures all personal, small business, commercial, and corporate banking customers of our continued support during these uncertain times. We are pleased to advise that all our credit officers are available to assist you with navigating your finances during these challenging times. We encourage you to contact your relationship officer at the bank for discussion and advice on your particular circumstance for a solution that meets your your specific needs. Additionally, you may email us at customercare at republicgrenada.com or send us a message on Facebook or call 444-2265. We look forward to continue offering the best possible quality and personalized service to you. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Welcome back. The Education Minister agrees with the Grenada Union of Teachers. She supports the union stance on the timing of CXE exams. The GUT does not believe that the exams should be written in July. But, according to the Minister, the decision is beyond the individual education ministries in the various Caribbean islands. GBN's Sherry Ann Blackman-Stevens has been following both sides of this debate and sends us this dispatch. We are concerned about the psychosocial readiness of the students, that sufficient time may not be afforded to them to readjust to regular schooling and to have them in the correct frame of mind to write the exams. The point of view of the Grenada Union of Teachers President Marvin Andel. However, Education Minister Emmeline Pear says the decision to allow students to sit the CXC, CSEC exams in July is not in our hands. They could not have gone forth without that approval that they got about a week ago. Now, before that, they sent to every member state asking, what is your preference? And in selecting that preference, you had three options. Exams in June, in August, September, I believe those were the options, generally speaking. And in Grenada's case, we said the latest possible option, September, is our preference. And even September would be dependent on the situation locally as it relates to COVID-19. That was our response to CXC. Guess what? It's also the same view of the um, Caribbean Union of Teachers. They were in that same meeting and I heard them. They supported the option of September. The decision to allow exams in July was taken by the region's education ministers during a meeting last week. We did not have much support as it relates to September. So the next question is, what can you do? Now, the only thing we can do now is A, put systems and structures in place to ensure the safety of our students so they can go to sit those exams. Or B, we said we are so concerned about these students that we are not going to allow them to take part in these exams in 2020. All students in Form 5 are to repeat Form 5 and do the exams in 2021. That's also an option. According to her, more than two-thirds of education ministers voted in favor of CXC, CSEC exams in July. Regarding CPEA, which is often referred to as common entrance exams, Minister Pez said a decision will be made soon. In the case of us, a grade six student, you are simply just moving one grade upwards, and we believe that a possible option is not to have CPA. By Monday, by Monday, all of the options would have been presented, discussed, and a final decision taken. And I suspect by Tuesday, Wednesday, we should be informing the general public of our final position on CPA and our final position on those other examinations. Minister Pei said that at the end, it will all boil down to leadership and taking tough decisions after a cross-section of dialogue. Cherian Blackman-Stephen, GBN News. 
And now the tracker continues. As of today, Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, Grenada records only four active cases of COVID-19. The results followed tests, which were conducted on the previously reported seven remaining active cases on the island. Three tests returned negative. The update was provided today by the COVID-19 National Response Coordinator, Dr. George Mitchell, in a brief statement issued via the Government Information Service. Also today, Grenada has conducted 472 PCR tests and 2,534 rapid tests. Our remaining cases are stable and are being monitored closely. We look forward to their speedy recovery. As we battle through COVID-19, and even as Grenada opens slowly, I remind everyone to keep your guard up and remain very vigilant. Please practice proper hygiene with frequent hand washing. Please wear your mask when in public and exercise physical distancing of at least six feet. And to date, we can tell you that Grenada has recorded 22 cases of COVID-19 with zero deaths. One confirmed case left the country. Four remain in the care of healthcare officials while the other 17 have recovered. And while they continue to track the numbers, various issues are coming to the fore as a result of COVID-19. What we can tell you is that conditions laid out for the reopening of churches have led to an uproar in some quarters. Some persons say they find the regulations being laid down by the government are too onerous. Over the weekend, the government issued a six-page document setting out some of the rules governing the churches which would like to welcome their congregants back into the sanctuary. GBN's Rena Peer is looking at what various sides are saying. Church leaders and members have expressed an outrage over some of the measures contained in the government's guidelines. The main bone of contention surrounds why churches need to apply for permission whereas that has not applied to businesses or other sectors which have been allowed to operate. Um, according to the protocol, it's two hours service, but business places are open from eight to four. And I think at this point in time where people need hope, service should be longer than two hours. I'm thinking um, somehow that this uh formula they sent out for a church is a crazy, crazy thing. As far as I'm concerned, the church is of vital importance to the country. The regulations stated that after the application have been processed, religious leaders will receive a permit which must be displayed on the church doors. President of the Alliance of Evangelical Churches, Devon Roche, did not push back against the criticism when he appeared on GBN's premier current affairs program on Monday. Our understanding, as was explained, is that this is not so much of an application to say that you have permission to be a church. The idea here is that you are saying that I am agreeing to basically utilize the various precautionary measures, the uh, safety measures, and so forth. And the idea beyond the display of the permit was, um, and, and maybe the word permit might have not been the best choice of words, but the idea here was to say that we are an organization that have agreed to uh, abide by the various safety measures. And uh Chairman of the Grenada Conference of Churches, Silbert Prescott, believes the measures is designed to safeguard the well-being of all parties. There's a psychological um, challenge here because people have been away from church. I think it's reopening up again does not mean just go back in the church and continue as it was before. I think there are a number of things that is going to change um, in terms of the way that we um, engage with each other, the way that we um, practice some of our um, liturgies within the life of the church. And so his thoughts have been echoed by Religious Affairs Minister Emily Pear, who says the regulations will be reviewed within the next two weeks. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. And while the debate continues over the regulations governing the reopening of churches, 
There are calls for other sectors to be reopened. Today, the Information Minister, Emmeline Pay, said that discussions continue as to calls for the reopening of barber shops and hairdressing salons. Speaking on GBN's To The Point program, Minister Pay said that the government ministers have been expressing concern at every cabinet meeting for the livelihood of these professionals. She said that health and safety is the primary concern. When you think about, let's say, a barber or a hairdresser or a nail tech, for example, when we think about the close contact that those persons would have to make with the client, I believe that is the only reason that permission was granted to other sectors before. And it's not that this group was targeted, you know, and you want to punish them in any way. It is just about the safety and the well-being. And very soon, I am certain, that public announcement will be made about those sectors, and I do not want to be the one to divulge information regarding those sectors. I would let the appropriate um, departments deal with that. And we at the GBN continue to follow the updates as they provided by the government. Any sector to be opened, we'll be sure to tell you. And still to come in the news, the Special Victims Unit analyze and compare data on sexual abuse against children and also related to domestic violence. Do stay with us. This is the News at 7. Tropical shipping is fast and reliable. Always on time, safe and affordable. When this time here to connect you. Tropical worldwide, you must get you. Shop online and you get it on time. Hassle free to meet your deadline. Consolidate any size, any load. With tropical shipping, so we ship everything. I can't wait to ship with tropical. I can't wait. Go back and ship it close now. I cannot wait to ship with tropical. A local agents, George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. Email us at grenadasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping. Committed to island life. Hills and Valley Medcare Center, located on Grenville Street, St. George's, has a highly professional team that gives excellent service in massage therapy, physiotherapy, speech therapy, medical consultation, and more. Hills and Valley Medcare Center sells a wide range of medical supplies, offers home visits for patients in Grenada and Carrier Coup, and opens Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. through to 7 p.m. Visit or call Hills and Valley Medcare Center today, 435-6904. How going on, boy? Hey, hey, good, old things? Hey, you easy? Yeah. Boy, line, boy, your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as a house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A++ for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad, boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the Housing Authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call. 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks. They go draw your plan. They go tote your materials. <laughs> hey, man, where you going? The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. The Esplanade Mall, something for everyone. Go on a shopping spree today and experience some magic. 
This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flu. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 70 channels and 12 in HD. All for $200 a month with the new all-in bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. And thanks for staying with us. Members of the Special Victims Unit of the Royal Grenada Police Force say they're seeing what looks like an increase in the number of child sexual abuse and domestic violence cases. The speculation is yet to be confirmed as the number of cases is still being analyzed and compared with previous periods. Rena Pear has that story. For the year 2020 so far, the Special Victims Unit has received a total of 40 cases of domestic violence and child sexual offenses. According to Superintendent Andrea Victor, head of the Special Victims Unit, 80% of the cases reported are related to sexual offenses against children. Superintendent Victor outlines some of the arrests made so far. There have been 38 arrests as a result with a significant portion of charges laid against alleged perpetrators. 136 charges were laid. What you find is that in most instances, one person would receive several charges, um, given the number of times they would have had that sexual contact with the minors or that um, victim. 17 of the child sexual cases were reported while the country was on strict lockdown period between March and May, implemented to stop the spread of the coronavirus. While the latest statistics may not show a definite increase in cases compared to the same period last year, Superintendent Victor says after an analysis, this may change. We have not been able yet to capture the statistical data. Um, the stations and our criminal records office still have to collate those information. Um, but from my local knowledge, there have been several incidents of domestic violence reported to the police, particularly so intimate partner violence. And we all, there is a perceived, and I'm saying a perceived increase um, because a number of persons would, would call and ask, well, have you seen an increase in domestic violence and sexual violence? And uh, rightfully so, or justifiably so, because it is understood that in times of crises, incidents of domestic violence and sexual violence, they are expected to increase. Conversely, though, uh, our statistics shows differently, and as I indicated, um, We've had only 17 sexual violence, but I am aware we've had a number of domestic violence, especially intimate partner violence, but I cannot give you a direct figure. This is yet to be assessed. The head of the unit also explained that the SVU continues to work closely with the courts and with the Ministry of Social Development to provide safety measures for victims during the COVID-19 crisis. For GBN News, I am Rena Pair reporting. And we're moving now from social affairs to that of the environment. SIDS DOC, the Small Islands Developing State Sustainable Energy and Climate Resilience Organization, has signed an agreement with Grid Arendel to collaborate on the promotion of nature-based solutions and technologies for the sustainable use and management of marine resources. They're trying to support the economic and livelihood systems of the populations of small island and low-lying developing countries. The agreement provides support to SIDSDOC for establishment of an ocean technologies knowledge network access to information experience and lessons learned from using nature-based solutions and SIDS appropriate technology applications on small islands like Grenada. The development of geographic information systems for ocean technologies applications and the assessment of opportunities for addressing coastal erosion and the loss of ecosystems through nature-based solutions such as the bio-rock technology and renewable desalination systems. Projects will support 
the economic livelihood systems of the populations and promote nature-based solutions and the use of technology. And stay with us. When we come back, we will be taking a look at what the cameras caught and also a look at the weather. A good eye captures all. GBN Eyesore is brought to you by Clear Vision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight's ISAL features photos of kindergarten students of Alpha Junior School at their reading corners at home. The students were given a project by their teacher to create the home reading corners. These were some of the results. You can send in your photo and video submissions via our social media platforms. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. And now for a look at the weather forecast. Tonight's minimum temperature, 23 degrees Celsius. The weather, partly cloudy to cloudy and windy with light to moderate showers. And the winds east to east-southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting higher at times. The seas, they're moderate to rough with waves up to 9 feet in open water. And there is an advisory, a marine advisory is in effect. The tides low at 9 this evening and they will be high at 3 o'clock in the morning and looking ahead to Thursday's forecast we should have some partly cloudy to cloudy weather it should be breezy and hazy with light to moderate morning showers becoming generally fair as the day progresses and if you're wondering Friday would look like the weather is expected to be partly cloudy breezy and hazy with light isolated morning showers on Saturday mostly fair weather could be a good day for the beach up to 11 o'clock, you can visit Mostly Fair, Breezy and Hazy. And when we come back and look at what's happening in the sporting world, a little later with Beverly, we'll be taking a look at around the region and around the globe. Do stay with us. At Communal, we are adapting to meet the changing needs of our shareholders and members. Times are changing, and with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely. Want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder? No wait time for transactions to update. Voila! Who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment? Not a communal member? You can join our family today by applying online. At Communa, we see you working hard to ensure that you save, invest, and grow. Communal, join us today. This will be the best financial decision you have ever made. My name is Hollis, Mr. Kilomap, and I endorse this message. are always special we give them teddies hugs kisses chocolates perfumes and jewelry all the softer things in life but for father's day <laughs> for 
offers 15% discount of all machines storewide. Come in and choose your favorite machine and instantly get 15% off. Walk in in style and walk out with a smile. This Father's Day, sale starts June 15th and ends June 20th. Europa. We service what we sell. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caribou, and Pretty Martin in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalance hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. Sporting fans, the West Indies tour of England this summer is becoming increasingly likely following positive discussions between the medical team and staff of the English Cricket Board and Cricket West Indies on Monday. Both boards have been in discussion since the start of the month, intent on charting a pathway to the West Indies travelling to England for three tests in July. Initially scheduled for June, the tour was has been postponed because of fears over player safety caused by the spread of the coronavirus. Cricket West Indies CEO Johnny Grave has confirmed that the ECB is confident that they can deliver a safe plan for biosecure behind closed doors cricket that will meet the UK government guidelines and will therefore likely secure the board's approval. Meanwhile, England's return to training has been halted due to safety protocol complications. The England Cricket Board had hoped that bowlers would have been able to return to training on Wednesday. However, issues in establishing uniform practices that minimize the chances of infection have proved slightly harder to implement than envisaged. Among the issues understood to have contributed to the holdup is a scarcity in personal protective equipment to be worn by physios and a delay in some batches of balls. Up to 18 bowlers are now expected to take part in staggered sessions across seven grounds from Thursday as the first England players to begin individual training. The ICC Cricket Committee on Monday recommended changes to ICC regulations to mitigate the risks posed by the COVID-19 virus and protect the safety of players and match officials. The committee, chaired by Anil Kumble, the former India captain, concluded a conference call convened to specifically address issues related to COVID-19, including maintaining the condition of the match ball and the appointment of non-neutral umpires and referees to international cricket. 
The recommendations of the Cricket Committee will now be presented to the ICC Chief Executives Committee in early June for approval. The ICC Cricket Committee heard from the Chair of the ICC Medical Advisory Committee, Dr. Peter Harcourt, regarding the elevated risk of the transmission of the virus through saliva and unanimously agreed to recommend that the use of saliva to polish the ball be prohibited. Lawyers representing William Wallace and the ousted executive of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association were on Tuesday granted permission to serve documents to FIFA pertaining to the case against them to be heard in the Trinidad and Tobago High Court. The High Court granted permission a day after said lawyers notified the Court of Arbitration for Sport that they were withdrawing their appeal against FIFA's decision to appoint a normalization committee to govern the affairs of the TTFA, citing concerns of institutional bias in favor of the world governing body. Since FIFA is not a situated in Trinidad and Tobago, the lawyers had to seek permission to serve documents to football's world governing body by email or courier service pursuant to Part 7.2b of the Civil Proceedings Rules. The lawyers have filed two claims before the High Court seeking permanent injunctions to prevent FIFA from interfering in the democratic processes of the TTFA and to prevent FIFA from interfering with the day-to-day -day management of the association. That's it for sports. The Probe on the Globe is next. And now for the program on the globe. In St. Lucia, the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations is considering the return of grade 6 and form 5 students during this academic year 2019-2020 based on the advice of the Ministry of Health. This is in preparation for the common entrance and CSEC exams. The department says it is keenly aware of the significance of all health, well-being and safety protocols as part of this consideration. It added that it has been engaging with several stakeholders and will continue to do so, mindful of the respective concerns of students, teachers, administrators, parents and support staff. Brazil has reported more than 1,000 deaths in a single day from the coronavirus for the first time amid warnings the outbreak is weeks away from its peak. The country has 271,628 confirmed cases, but the true number is likely to be higher because of insufficient testing. President Jair Bolsonaro has repeatedly played down the risk of COVID-19. On Tuesday, he again defended use of the unproven drug chloroquine as a remedy, despite alerts it may not be safe. The president repeated defiance of public health expert advice on COVID-19 and has led to the resignation of two trained doctors in the past month. The World Health Organization, WHO, has warned that nearly a quarter of a billion Africans could contract the coronavirus in the first day of the pandemic, with between 150,000 and 190,000 of them dying. Africa has had less than 100,000 cases so far, but WHO experts believe the continent will have a prolonged outbreak over a few years, and aid workers say the huge focus on containing the virus has led to other health issues being neglected. The Democratic Republic of Congo confirmed its first case of COVID-19 in early March, but a doctor in the capital believes the disease arrived earlier. If equipment is available, many African states could ramp up tests some though not Dr. Congo. Some though not DR Congo did not have did more HIV tests between 1 1st October and 31st December than the 1% target for COVID-19 testing. And that's it for the Looker on the Globe. When we return, a recap of our top stories.
And now for a recap of the main points in tonight's news. The owner and employees at the Douglaston estate devastated following Monday's fire. Explosion at gas station on Union Island sent shockwaves through the archipelago. Opposition leader says politics matters not with his senatorial appointments. The education minister says CXE exam dates not her choosing. Coming up in sports, or we did hear in the sports tonight that the CWI get assurances over player safety for proposed July test tour. And around the globe, we heard St. Lucia considering phased reopening of grade six and form five classes. That's the news at seven. I'm with Campbell on behalf of the entire news team saying thanks for joining us. See you again tomorrow. Long ago, the strength of Grenadians was in their arms as they worked the lands to get food.